Welcome to this educational video on the microbiome health. Join our science and education manager, Dr. Leah Linder, as she explains how much human we really are. So I'd like you to take a minute and think about what you saw when you looked in the mirror this morning. What I saw was an organism that was about 43% human. Now, this isn't because it was early and I didn't have coffee yet. But when you, we think about it, it's from a cellular level. We have, on average, about 37 trillion human cells in our body. Now, conversely, we have over 100 trillion microbial cells. So at that estimation, we're about 43% human. But some of you might say, well, you know, it's not the cells that count. You know, surely it's the DNA that's going to make the difference. So let's think about this again at the genetic level. When the breakdown of genes comes across, we have on average 20,000 human genes, depending on exactly what you want to call a gene, but we'll just say on average. Amazingly, we found that our microbial gene catalog is anywhere between 2 and 20 million cells. If we really think about that, at that estimation, we're really about 1% human. This is really important to think about because our human genes are fixed at conception. You know, say that epigenetics, we have a little bit of ability to modulate that, but our human genes are fixed at conception. But that other 99% of material, our microbial gene catalog, or our microbiome, is incredibly malleable we, with the advent of antibiotics or prebiotics, right? You can absolutely modulate them. So it's a wonderful message for those 99% of genes and genetic material that we house in our body. There's a lot of excitement about systems medicine, right? Systems biology. And our public health system is really set up to perform that systems medicine of gastro enterology and cardiology but you know we can't really do systems anything if we negate that 99% of the system right which is exactly what we do when we don't take the microbiome into account so all of these metabolic reactions are just part of the system that we can absolutely manipulate if we just knew how to do it most efficiently and I want you guys to think about what the microbiome looks like, right? It is this vast ecosystem of all of these different teeming bugs and fungi and protozoans and viruses cruising around. What's really interesting is that over the course of the 20th century, there's been remarkable advancements in public health, you know, and I don't want to diminish the importance of that because we've seen that there's a lot of childhood and adult diseases caused by those single pathogens significantly decreased as the 20th century carried on. But what's also really interesting is that at that similar time, we saw an explosion in chronic disease, things like multiple sclerosis, asthma, um, type 1 diabetes. And what I think is really interesting about this is that this article was posted in the New England um, Journal of Medicine, one of the most prestigious medical journals out there. And it was published in 2002, so over about 18 years ago. And at the time that it was published, not one of those chronic diseases were linked to the microbiome or having a microbiome influence. But what's really interesting thing is that I can say today that not only are these four diseases linked to the microbiome, but also dozens and dozens of others. And this is really where it all happens, right? The GI tract is the home of the majority of our microbiome, our microbiota, right? And that this interaction between the GI tube, which really is the outside space, save a couple of sphincters, right? And the interaction with the inside world, right? Which is all of the, the processes that are taking place outside of the cavity. And the GI epithelial lining is really where that interaction takes place. It's where the microbiome really talks to our own innate systems. And they do these through a variety of different mechanisms, such as you know, releasing different cytokines and different digestive enzymes. They help train our immune system as well. About 70% of our immune system within our GI tract, within our gut-associated lymphoid tissue, our GALT for short. And we absolutely want to be able to pay attention to all of the things that are coming in that too. We want to make sure that we're siphoning off the things that are 
going to be beneficial and the things that are not going to be beneficial that we can ward those off. But it's a wonderful, wonderful balance and dance because our, at the same time as our bodies say that, like, you know, we have to be able to hold this vast amount of microbial data within our GI tract and not mount a defensive response against that. But then at that same point, if something gets to be more pathogenic and starts to interact with that epithelial barrier, we need to be able to mount that response. So what's really interesting is that the GI microbes are able to modulate that epithelial barrier function through a variety of mechanisms, including secreting um, IgA, right, which is, houses so much of our intelligence of our immune system. But what's also really interesting is that they're going to secrete other things including um, different types of metabolites that are going to regulate not only the nerves in our system, not only the immune system, but also how we digest our food as well.